Hey YouTubers, this is Richard with you again for the weekly Gravekeeper deck profile. It's going to be a little longer than last week's video because I'm going to talk a little bit about strategy this week. And so let's get right into it. First of all, three Commandants. That's to search out my Necro Valley. And if you need to, you can always summon this monster for a 2100 beater while Necro Valley's on the field. Three Spies. The Spies are great. Probably the best monster in my deck I think anyway I mean they're my favorite um, I like to special summon the shaman with spy and I'm gonna talk about that a little more later but next three recruiters recruiters also very powerful monster in this deck uh, usually I'm gonna use it to search out a commandant or secondly maybe a descendant maybe a heretic also heretic has been coming out a lot with recruiter and it's just a great great card to run at three now I'm for doubles I have two descendants descendant combos are not very uh, speedy this format you get a lot of chains off of them and they can end up hurting you a lot but it's always good to have the two level four dark monsters that go up to 2000 with Necro Valley on the field the bad boy himself the two gravekeepers heretic the Heretic is unaffected by all other card effects as long as Necro Valley is on the field. And that means that if you can clear your monster's field, or if you can clear your opponent's monster field, and you can attack with Heretic without being afraid of anything. It's just like no mirror forces, no, no magic cylinders, nothing. It's, this card just gets through it all, and it's just really good. You can Torrential Tribute it's, it. To kill all your opponent's monsters, but keep it on the field if you want to. It's just a really good playmaker. One-offs for monsters. One Gravekeeper Assailant. Uh, this is to get over those high attack monsters, but might have low defense, like a lot of the Bujins. Also, so they can't get craned and things like that. And the Gravekeeper Shaman herself. Um, like I said, I like to special summon the Shaman to the field with Spy. Or if I can special summon it in another way, I like to do that. Because... The Shaman is an Abyss Dweller in effect. Like It negates all monster effects that activate in the graveyard except Gravekeeper monsters. And your opponent is not going to be playing Gravekeepers more than likely. So if not only does she negate the effects of graveyard effects, but she also protects Necro Valley, making it impossible for your opponent to destroy it by card effects or by playing a field spell. And... Um, we're actually going to talk a little bit more about Shaman when we get into the extra deck, but for now I'm just going to leave her on the field. Next, or coming up, is my spell. Our one more monster I added recently is the Malefic Cyber and Dragon, just to have a boss. I like it a little bit better than the Gravekeeper's Visionary, but I might add the Visionary, to be honest. Next is going to be spells. And I have three Necro Valley, two Stele. In Royal Tribute, the most powerful spell in the deck. Uh, these shouldn't need any explanation, really, except for Stele. I like to run it two rather than one because recycling monsters is a really powerful tool in this deck, especially if your Shaman gets to the grave or you need a Spy or a Recruiter or just anything, really a Heretic, especially. Next, uh, only two pots of Duality. I think two is fine. This deck is fairly consistent without three. Only two Mystical Space Typhoons, and um, I think I might change one of those out for a Dust Tornado anyway. I don't end up using these a lot. I like to chain them against Abyss Spheres and Mermail decks, and of course protect my Necro Valley against things like Harpy's Hunting Ground. Book of Moon and Dark Hole. Shouldn't need any explanations there. You can use Book of Moon on the, your own Spy to flip it face down and get its, get its effect off more than once on a single Spy. That is nice. And then my favorite magic card in the deck is the Magical Dimension. And what this card does is it tributes a face-up spellcaster I control, which all Gravekeeper monsters are spellcasters. And it special summons a or it special summons a grave a spellcaster monster from my hand to the field, and when it does that, it destroys a monster on the field. And so I could use this to tribute my recruiter. Special summon my shaman instead of just doing the tribute summon. Get my recruiter's effect off. 
and destroy a monster on their side of the field with my Necro Valley protected. It's just a super, super strong play. And we're going to back it up even further when we get into our extra deck here shortly. So just set those two off, off to the side, and I'm going to go do roll with my trap lineup now. One right of spirit. Special summons a gravekeeper monster from the graveyard. That's in case my shaman gets destroyed usually. Um, still sticking with three royal or three imperial tombs of the Necro Valley. Just a really powerful counter trap. It's always great to have counter traps in your deck. Only two Fiendish Chain. I think two is enough. People get around them fairly quickly now that they're expecting them all the time, and two is good. One Black Horn of Heaven stops any XZ summon that you want, pretty much. Stops any Synchro summon that you want, and any inherent special summon. This does not negate effect special summons. One Mirror Force. Got it down to one to get the Malefic Cyber and Dragon into the deck. Uh, didn't look back, really. Don't regret bumping it down to one. But this is to clear the field of Swarm decks, because Gravekeepers can't handle Swarms. Very well, that is. One Starlight Road. This is for when I know my opponent has Mirror Force or has Torrential Tribute or might be considering Dark Holing me. It, when this activates, this activates when my opponent tries to destroy two or more cards I control. I negate the activation and destroy the card. And then I have the option of special summoning the Stardust Dragon for my extra deck. It's just a really powerful card. Last week at Locals, I purposely ran into a Mirror Force just so I could activate that card. And it worked to great effect. And then, of course, the one-offs. Evacuation device. Bottomless. Torrential Tribute. And Solemn Warning to complete the main deck at 42 cards. And we're going to get started with the extra deck now. Obviously a Cyber and Dragon, so I can special summon the Malefic Cyber and Dragon. Gym Knight Pearl, considering taking him out. Are not taking them out, but rotating them for a new monster. And then the key extra deck tech monster for this deck is going to be the Master Key Beetle. And how this works is a lot of people like to target their Necro Valleys with the Master Key Beetle, but I like to get Shaman on the field first, maybe with Magical Dimension after I tributed my Recruiter. And maybe with my Recruiter... I added my Commandant and got Necro Valley on the field. And I already had or I had a, a Spy flip face down. I can flip my Spy. And let's say I special summon from my deck a Heretic. Just because I can afford it. And so I overlay for my Master Key Beetle. And when I use my Master Key Beetle's effect, I can target Shaman. To protect with Master Key Beetle because Shaman is already protecting Necro Valley. And this just puts a really, really good lock on the field. And it's just stopped so many opponents in their tracks that I just wanted to explain that a little better in this week's deck profile. Continuing with the extra deck now Crazy Box for Shadow Imprisoning Mirror, Skill Drains, Steel Swarm Roach. This works great against Prophecy decks. <coughs> Utopia. The Photon Papler Operative. It's really good if you've used your Book of Moon and you know what's face down. And this is just a really good tight spot on Nodder. Black Ship of Corn for the win condition always. Evil Swarm Nightmare. Maystroke. Ga 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 for the win condition. Diamond Dire Wolf. Stardust Dragon for Starlight Road. And I also side Malefic Stardust Dragon. And the number 101 Silent Honor Arc for really problematic monsters like Draco Sax and uh, things of that nature. Next, moving on to my side deck. A little different from last week's. Uh, one Spellbook of Wisdom, an extra magical dimension, and one Wonder Wand for sided spells. Sided monsters, a Greek figure was Nobleman, 
the Malefic Stardust Dragon, Thunder King Ryo, Gravekeeper's Watcher, great against Mermails, Effect Veiler, the Fossil Dyna to do it for the Sided Monsters, and then Sided Traps, an extra Rite of Spirit, the Deck Devastation Virus, Curse Seal, the Forbidden Spell, very effective against Spellbook Prophecy, an Overworked, a Skill Drain, and a Light Imprisoning Mirror. That's going to do it for the deck profile this week, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, please leave comments below in your thoughts and any suggestions you have for this deck uh, and what you think of it in general. And I will be back with you guys next Tuesday for another Gravekeeper's deck profile. Uh, this is Richard signing off.